Income tax 2023-2024. Earned income tax credit, the EIC, with two qualifying children. Tax software example. Get ready and some coffee because we need to save some money for vacation with the help of income tax preparation. 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example problem using Lacert Tax Software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to software, great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Standard starting point. We've got Adam Taxman trying to avoid that dang tax man living in Beverly Hills 90210. We're going to start off with single filing status, no dependents, W-2 income at the 100000 for the starting point. Standard deduction, therefore, then the 13850 taxable income. The bottom line of the income statement part of the income tax formula, 86150 which we can mirror in our formula in Excel, 100,000, 13,850 standard deduction, taxable income, 86,150, calculating the tax using the software, page 2, 14,266. That's page number 2. There's the 14,266. We're going to be focusing in on the credit, specifically looking at the earned income credit. Noting the earned income credit is the classic example of the tax system being used as more of a welfare or benefit or safety net type of program rather than tax collection uh, type of uh, system for this particular part of it. Remembering that if we had a dollar of a credit versus a dollar of a deduction, then they're both good lowering taxes typically, but the deduction will only decrease the first page, the taxable income, the income statement part by the dollar, and therefore only have an impact or potential impact based on the tax rate. Whereas the dollar of a credit could likely give us that full benefit of the entire dollar in terms of a tax benefit. And that will be the case whether it be up here in the tax and credits or in the payments section unless the tax liability is going below zero. If that's the case, then typically you would think that you can't get any more benefit from deductions or credits because that would mean the IRS is paying you instead of you paying them which means that it's not really a tax at that point in time. It's a benefit or welfare type of program, safety net program. And the payment section is where that takes place. So if the payments, of course, were greater than the amount of tax liability, that would mean that we're still paying taxes usually, but we over withheld and therefore get a refund. But if the tax liability is basically you know zero and uh, we had credits instead of payments, these refundable credits could still result in a quote refund, which isn't really a refund, but rather a benefit safety net or welfare type of program uh, or system. That's our going to be our focus now. In prior presentations, we looked at the scenario where we had zero children. Here's our trustee table. If we had zero children, it's a pretty low credit. If, but if we have one child, it's linked to the children, then the two credits come into play that could have that refundable component, that being the additional child tax credit and the earned income credit. It was at 3995 with one child. It could go up to 6604 if two children. Remember, that high cap is the same whether single or married with uh, the two children. However, the income thresholds are a little bit different. 52,918 uh, if single, 59,478 if married, clearly not doubled, right? And 
Note that this, this income is really where the credit is lost entirely, meaning it's not telling us where we maximize the credit. So we'll take a look at that there. We'll take a look at a situation. Where would we have to be to maximize the credit in, earned, in terms of earned income? Number one. And then number two, what would happen if we had two people that were both uh, in the same scenario with two kids that got married or possibly one person with one kid and the other with two kids and then they got married or something like that? What would be the impact on uh, the credits? So let's take a look at that. So let's go back on over and we're going to say, okay, so obviously we're not, if there's two kids, then, uh, and their earned income credit is not going to be there. If they make a hundred thousand, they're gonna have to move out of Beverly Hills here. <laughs> if they're making, uh, the, if you're getting the earned income credit, but first let's say we, let's add the two children first and then change the filing status. So remember page two, we have the filing status here, which is a big impact. If I add two children, the second child doesn't change the filing status, but the first one is likely to do so, changing these brackets and also changing the deductible component from 13,000 to head of household 20,800. So if I go back on over, let's add the two dependents again. So now we have Adam Taxman moving from the worst filing status to the head of household filing status, having two dependents, remembering that if someone is not married, then having one dependent is one of the requirements typically to be moving from the worst status of single to head of household. The second dependent not giving us more benefit in that particular area, but possibly giving us a benefit in terms of the child tax credit as well as the earned income credit if we're on the low end uh, income side of things. We are currently still at the 100,000, so we're not gonna be getting the earned income credit. Let's first look at what we have here. We see the status changed or the standard deduction went from the 13,850 to 20,800. So that brings the taxable income to 79,200, page two. We also have a change to the, the uh, tax rates, which are gonna be up here because now we have more favorable tax rates for the ordinary income versus the single filer. We have two dependents because we have enough tax liability to cover it. We get the full 4,000 of the child tax credit, which we talked about before as the non-refundable component and nothing down here in the refundable area due to the fact that we have a high, higher income uh, situation. Let's bring the income down now. So I'm gonna go back on over and we know that the maximum credit that we could get is 3,995. This is the maximum amount we can get before we lose the credit entirely. What we would like to do, I'm sorry, that's not the maximum credit. We have two children. It's 6,604. So we would lose the credit entirely if not married, 52,918 uh, of income. But what we want to know is where it's going to be maximized so let's look at the trustee tables these are from the form 1040 instructions you could find on the irs website and i'm looking at the column now for the single with two uh dependents and i'm looking for it to max out at the 6604 so it happens right here so that means that we can have our income as low as basically uh 16 let's put it below that let's put it 16,000 to start off with so if i go okay going back on over 100,000 down all the way to 16,000 we're then going to say all right now the credit is at 6,410 now that is of course uh, a little below the maximum which is 6,604 so if i go to page one now we still have the two dependents 16,000 of income, the 20,000 of the head of household would be completely wiping that out, bringing us to zero income. And therefore we're not really getting any benefit from the more favorable tax brackets in this case on the lower income side of things. We're not getting the, the uh, non-refundable portion of the child tax credit because we don't have any tax liability to consume it. We do have the refundable portion of the child tax credit we talked about before. And then here's the earned income credit at the 6410. If our income goes below that, it's going to reduce the credit. Let's look at how high we can go to keep the credit uh, at the maximum. So we're at the 6604. Let's continue down. We're looking 
6604 somewhere down here so there's the 6604 and if i go back here it it goes down around here so basically at 21,600 let's say starts to go back down let's go 21 21,600 and then go back on over and then on page two now we have it's going down a little bit 6590 the maximum is at the 6604 so now we're at the high end if we're talking a head of household non-married filer two dependents uh, and 21,600 is the high end of the income to max out the credit. And then if I go down and say, okay, that's gonna give us 800 that's left over after the head of household deduction, which means the tax tables are benefiting us to some degree. The tax is only $81. We get the above the line or the non-refundable child tax credit wiping out the tax, tax liability now at zero and Here's the non-refundable part of the child tax credit we talked about before. And then we have the earned income tax credit. Let's use this as base. Now, if I was to increase the income, of course, it would go down, down, down. This credit would go down until I go over 52,918, in which case we would have the credit be removed entirely. But to maximize the credit, we're around the maximization area here. So let's mirror, let's put this in our Excel worksheet here and say, all right, the income... What did I say the income was at uh, 21.6? So I'm going to say income is at 21,600. We had the other credits over here, which I'm going to say duh, 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 came out to 81 because it was limited. So I'm going to say 81 on those credits. And then we have the additional child tax credit, which came out to 2,865. So I'm going to say... 2865 it would be basically 1600 1600 would be the max uh between the two of them and then it was reduced to 2865 so you might like do a little bit of a calculation so you can kind of understand basically what's happened with the child tax credit doing something like that but and then i'm going to reduce it by what what did i say it was 2865 2865 so this minus this it was reduced by 335 so i can kind of this is me just trying to put a little bit of a calculation in here so i can get an idea of the calculation and rely a little bit on the software but a little a little bit on double checking the software but I, we've done that before i'm just going to rely on the software for that and then we're going to say the earned income credit is going to be over here so we'll say then the earned income credit is now at the uh, 2865, so I'm gonna say 2865. That brings us to the 5730. If I go back to the first page, we have a head of household filing status of 20,800. So that means that we have income of 800. It's wiped out by the 800. Uh, I'm sorry, that's our taxable income, it's wiped out so wait a sec, the tax is 81 and it's wiped out by the credits and then we have the other credits. So let's see if that makes sense. So if I go to page one, we have bottom line, $800, 800. The tax calculated page two, $81, $81, wiped out by the non-refundable child tax credit. And then we have the refundable credits at the, it should be, the 9,455. And so what did I do wrong here? So it should be do, 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 refundable credits, earned income credit. The earned income credit was 6590. This is the wrong one, 6590. Back to page one, 9455, 9455. All right, let's say that's gonna be our, basically our baseline case. So now let's imagine that we had that we had two people in that same scenario so two people in that same scenario would be getting a refund of uh, eighteen thousand nine hundred and ten and let's say they got married now so we're gonna we're gonna double it up and see what the difference is uh here versus them getting married okay so now if they got married they're in the exact same situation 
So we're going to say, all right, let's say they go from head of household to married filing jointly now. They're going to have four kids. I'm just going to add two more kids here. All right, and then I'm going to add another W-2 income. So I'm going to say w W-2 income for the spouse another 21,600 saying everything is even between the two of them and they got married now. And so then I'm going to go back on over and say, okay, so that means now we have the two of them, Adam and Jane, they moved up filing statuses from head of household to married filing joint. They've got the four kids now, Sam and then daughter two, and then we just named them kid three and kid four. And this one is the other dependent. All right. I brought them over. So they're all, uh, child tax credit uh qualifying for the child tax credit okay so now the income was doubled because they got married and they were in the same situation so we're at the 43 uh 200 and now we have the uh standard deduction went up from the head of household 20,800 to 27,700 there that is leaving us the 15,500 for the taxable income page two calculating the tax we have more favorable rates because they basically doubled the single rates so we're going to say that's good so the tax is at 1553 that's wiped out by the non-refundable part of the child tax credit which we talked about before bringing the liability to zero then we have the refundable part of the additional child tax credit as well as the earned income credit so we're focused on the earned income credit specifically. There's interplay between the two of them, which is quite complex because they're both dependent on the children. But the earned income credit specifically still has only a max of 6,604. So if you had two people that were maxing out 6,604, it would double. But if they get married, then it's still just at the 6,604. And the maximum income that you can earn and still get some credit was 52,918. We saw that the middle income was something more like to max it out uh, was was this uh, 21,600. But again, that's not exactly doubled uh, when you get to when you go to the married status. So uh, let's pull this back on over. So, and so now the max only goes up to 53. So the whole kind of bell curve or curve that you can think about that would go up and then back down in terms of the maximum credit compared to the income level, you know, you could shift that based on married. And so then, so, so that's what we have. So that comes out to 10,353. So let's go back on over and say, all right, so that's going to be 10,000. Oh, now it's percentifying it again don't do the percent down thing 10,000 uh, uh, 353 353 so if I did this right it looks like there's a difference that if they were both single of eight thousand five hundred and fifty seven dollars which is a substantial difference for you know lower income uh, individuals you would think so again kind of a strange like situation in that case so the other the other way we can take a look at this is if if they had like like one let's say one of them had uh a a max out on the income for one kid and then the second one had a max out of the two kids right so we did that last time let's see if i can open up my prior worksheet here and take a look at my baseline case would be uh, if they had, if they were head of household with one kid, we said that they would earn 26,000 of income and basically have 5,585. So now I'm going to say, okay, what if, what if one individual had two kids? And the other individual had one and they were maxing out the credit. I came out to 5585. 5585. That means if they got married, they would have a benefit with two separate tax returns of 15 15,040. So let's see, let's see if in that scenario they got married. So I'm gonna go back on over and say, okay, well, what if that would mean they'd only have that would mean that they have three kids. 
And interesting, the income levels are kind of the same of that 21,600 for the one kid to be maxing out, to be maxing out versus the two. So the income level is going to be the same around 21,600, which would be maximizing the benefit if they were single of the 3,000 uh, with one kid, 3,995. And if they were single or head of household with two kids, that same income level would have the 6604. But now they're getting married. So we're going to say, okay. So let's see. So that comes out to the 43. So I'm going to go back on over. If I did this properly, hopefully I did. I know I'm doing this kind of quickly, but we have them married now. So now they're married, but they only have three kids. And so, so we have only three. <laughs> only three of them. Those crazy rascals. So we're going to say 43,200. And then we're going to say the, the standard deduction is 27700 And that's going to give us the 15500 And then if I go to page number two, we've got the tax calculated at the 1553 Basically same scenario. And then we have the child tax credit wiping that out. Then down below, we have the child tax credit of the additional child tax credit for the three kids at the 4004 47 and the earned income credit is at 4248. So again, if they if they were single or if they filed both head of household instead of married, you would think the total credit that they might get was close to maximizing, which would have been 3995 plus 6604 versus the credit that they're getting here minus this four two four eight right that's a big difference but but it's a little get complicated because of the interplay with the uh, child tax credit but in any case the total refund i'm i'm coming to eight thousand six ninety five so if i come back on over here and say we're saying eight thousand uh six ninety five plus six six oh four so now we have a difference of like six thousand yeah three hundred and forty five dollars or something right so again even in that scenario it's, it seems fairly significant now it, it could be somewhat less significant in a situation where you only had the one like like if you if you had one person with three kids uh with the two kids that was maxing out the credit at six thousand six oh four versus someone who is has no kids and was getting the six hundred dollar credit then then you would think it would be the difference would only be the six hundred right you'd say okay well then you would think that the one person might be getting like a six hundred benefit and if they filed separately you'd have this plus the six hundred and then and uh so that plus the six hundred is what you would have and then if they got married uh i got confused here <laughs> then i'm gonna say now let's knock off another kid we're back to two kids they're married with two kids and uh the income threshold to max out uh for for this one let's just bring it basically down to zero it's pretty low like ten thousand. if they had zero kids so now the one it was maximizing at 21 six the other had uh, 10,000, let's say. And then if I go back to our form, hopefully I, that's like two kids now, 31,600 if they get married. That's being close to wiped out by the by the standard deduction, 3,900, page number two, 393 on the tax, wiped out by the non-refundable part of the child tax credit. We still get a part of the child tax credit down here. And then the earned income credit is at 5,866, which again, you would kind of assume if they filed separately and were both maxing out the credit, this one would have been maxed at the 6604. This one would have been maxed at the 600. So it would have been 7,204 minus the 5,866. So that's, you know, 1,338. Or if I look at the totals down here, nine zero six six so we have to do so nine oh six six 
So we could say this is going to be this minus this. So it's a difference of 989 marriage penalty or whatever you want to call it. Right. So it looks to me like I did those fairly quickly. But, you know, the general idea is that could be kind of a shocking thing uh, to people if they were if they just got married and they didn't really <laughs> like work work out and they and you know they lost like six thousand or that you know it's a six thousand dollar difference if they filed separately versus married filing joint and if we have the two if we have the two filers that were married again the idea would be the maximum credit is that six thousand six hundred and it would phase out to zero once we get to the 52 so let me just make sure i got the max we looked at the maximum if married if they were married the maximum credit is uh, this 6,604. So we'd be looking at this column, 6,604 here, if married, 6,604. So it goes from 6,604 6, starts at the low end. It looks like at the 16, 50 right so if i went back over here and i said income was 16 uh 50 uh, 16 16050 right 16050 uh uh 16 uh where, now i got totally lost we're at the 6 16 550 let's say so 16 550 so then i can i can check that and say okay so now the maximum credit is 6604 and then it can go as high as so i'm looking at this column 6604 we're looking here 6604 all the way down to around here 6604 all the way down till we get to 6604 going down to when we get to the high side 28200 so that's when it starts to go back down so 28200 boom so that's now it's starting to go back down from the maximum of 6604 and now we're at the income up to 28200 so again you kind of have to imagine that bell curve of where it where it maxes out which isn't basically given by a simple table like this which is usually giving where you lose the credit entirely which isn't exactly what people usually want to know where is it going to be maxed out at